Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton, and I'm going to help you get that C in your GCSE. This lesson, the central nervous system and reflexes. Your bodies are constantly absorbing information from the world around you and then processing it. They absorb that information through specially adapted parts of your body known as receptors. And there are all sorts of different types of receptors covering all those sensory systems which you're probably fairly familiar with. So in your eyes, for example, there are light-sensitive cells, similar to other animal cells with a cell membrane and a cytoplasm and a nucleus, but they're sensitive to light. So those are the light receptors. Inside your ears, there are receptors that are sensitive to sound. There are also receptors which are sensitive to which way up you are inside the semicircular canals in your inner ear. So you can use those to figure out your balance. There are receptors in your nose and in your mouth that are sensitive to chemicals which give you your sense of taste and your sense of smell. And there are various receptors in your skin which are sensitive not just to things like pressure but also to things like temperature as well. Now all that information needs to be processed by your central nervous system, but first it needs to get there. So let's take as an example the information travelling from the tip of your finger to your brain. If you touch a surface with the tip of your finger, that information which is picked up by the receptors in the tip of your finger then needs to travel along a series of nerve cells going up your arm into your spine and then up your spinal cord and into your brain for your brain to be able to interpret it. That's the route that that sensory information is going to take. And it travels along clusters of nerves. The cells in particular, and this is a key word which you need to know, the cells in those nerves are called neurons. A neuron is otherwise known as a nerve cell. So, the receptor in the tip of my finger collects the information, the neuron then transmits it towards my central nervous system and then my central nervous system and my brain can make sense of that information. Now reflexes are a little bit more complex because reflexes allow us to perform an action without our brains getting involved. And the way they do this is by allowing the central nervous system in your spinal cord to make that decision. Let's run through the process of a reflex and let's see the entire central nervous system in action. As an example, we'll take what would happen if you were to touch a hot object. Here we'll take a candle flame. As your finger approaches the candle flame, receptors in the tip of your finger detect the heat. The receptors send that information down a neuron towards the central nervous system. The type of neuron which is used for sensing information and dealing with sensory information is called a sensory neuron. When the information passing along the neuron reaches the central nervous system, it needs to pass on that information to another neuron. The point where two neurons join together is called a synapse, and the message is passed across the synapse chemically. One neuron releases chemicals that the other one then receives. This does slow down the process a little bit, but it also allows the signal to be split up. So the signal can be passed on to more than one neuron if necessary. In this case, the signal would be sent on its way up towards the brain, but it would also be passed to a relay neuron inside the spinal cord. The relay neuron just does what its name suggests. It relays that information to another neuron. In this case, the neuron which it passes it on to is a neuron that causes something to happen. And again, these two neurons are joined by a synapse. In the case of touching something hot, you're probably going to want the muscles in your arm to jerk your arm away from that hot object. The neurons which connect to your muscles and tell your muscles to move are known as motor neurons. Try and remember that a motor causes things to move, while a motor neuron is what triggers your muscles to move. Finally, that motor neuron sends the signal back down to the muscle which we want to move. This muscle is called an effector. By the time the original signal has reached your brain, it can also have gone down the motor neuron and caused your arm to jerk out of the way automatically. This is a reflex action. This whole process is known as a reflex arc, and let's just run through that quickly one more time, just so that you get familiar with it. The receptor detects the hot object, it passes that information to a sensory neuron. 
the sensory neuron passes the information via a synapse to a relay neuron, the relay neuron passes the information via another synapse to a motor neuron, and the motor neuron passes the information to an effector such as a muscle which causes you to jerk your hand out of the way. That's almost everything which you need to know. There's just one more thing which you need to be aware of, and that is, is that the effector isn't always going to be a muscle. It could also be a gland. A good example is the adrenal gland, which releases adrenaline into your system. You don't need to worry about any more detail than that. That is everything that you need to be aware of about the central nervous system and reflexes. Good luck in your GCSEs, everyone. And if this video was useful to you, please use the buttons below to like, subscribe, or share it with anyone else you think could also use a little help. Thanks for watching.